So once more, the game of shadows proceeds in Tracoria, and here is a summary of the turn. Uh, we start like so many other times in the north. A Transmiran Republican army mobilizes. It mobilizes to level three. The Tier R A travels through the region, donning wide-brimmed black hats and solemnly dancing while carrying. A beer which prominently displays the burned child's corpse. They stop in each population center to allow Transmirans to mourn the child as a symbol for all the harm done to Transmira by the Empire. The procession drives outrage and whispers of a holy war to avenge the misuse of Inashtar's gifts only grow louder. And so it goes from level two to level three. In Himbergond. The Fire Mountain Crones also mobilized to level 5. After more than a year's effort recruiting to the Coven and solidifying ties with the spirits of Himbergond, Birgit's work culminates with a final rite. Fire in Himbergond serves only Trinsmiran women uh, carrying Inash Inashtar in their hearts for all others. Uh, in their hearts for all others. Flame either refuses to light or burns hot and destructive, showing the wrathful face of the Lady of Fire worn unbridled lust in Ashtar. And so the mountain fire mountain crowns go from level four to level five. In Kark, the uh, alchemists mobilize from level four to level five, uh, perusing the interesting materials that can only be found in Kark. The alchemists stock up on these rare materials, recruiting some local talents as well while at it. So alchemists go from level four to level five. We go to Mixo. Here, the priests raise influence to level three. The priests settle in the buildings and earthworks left by the Highlanders and open a well-fortified temple to Luvena. Within, they've gathered some of the orphan slaves to live and be at peace. The temple shelters them, and they learn about Luvena, the moon, and the ocean that surrounds their new island home. The priests appear to be well-funded and have even begun building a shipyard. Uh, the nobles offer supplies, with ample loot and wreckage available from their recent battles at sea. They use their pleasure barges and ancestral sloops once more, and return with freed slaves, men, women and children, too traumatized by the mines to work or fight. They also return with purses and foremen, and encourage the priests to continue the fortification of their temple. Perhaps a dockyard would be in order. Uh, the roll here is 10d6, and we have three, four, five successes uh, out of the three necessary, which uh, means that um, the attempt to raise uh, the influence to level three is in fact successful for Fundibera. This also means that Limer, Limer Spada loses his influence in the area. Fundimera buys herself a f the Full Moon Fleet level 1 for one fate die. Um, the partisans in this area uh, will mobilize. Their eagerness to fight alarmed their mistress, who quickly sent them overseas, ostensibly to support the Clafikian Empire's Transmiran allies, but in reality to give them a taste of what the war they so eagerly sought looked like in practice. Uh, the Fontra Siloran's blood cooled quickly, so many orphans, even in victory. They quietly agreed that perhaps it was best to watch and learn from those more experienced with such things, rather than throwing themselves heedlessly into the fray. And so the partisans level up from level one to level two. Moving on to Palamux. In Nastrol, the um, Empress's uh, scholars 
uh, mobilized from level four to level five, a visibly pregnant Empress Georgiana left Fontrasilor for the healthier climes of northern Palamux together with her scholars. The latter always enjoyed their time in Astral. Not only was the region pleasant, but its ancient monasteries held endless stores of knowledge, uh, which aided them greatly in pursuing their research. Between that, consulting at the revived Academy of Maravelda and the old Imperial Academy in Fontrasilor, the Empress's scholars were now a veritable mobile academy in their own right. While the scholars consolidated their knowledge, the Empress accepted gentle headbutts from the Felic monks and planned her response to an uh, unexpected wedding invitation. After pondering a while, she wrote the Shamashi Temple in Fontasilor, and soon a note with her chosen gift enclosed was on its way to Pyatorna. And so the scholars go from level 4 to level 5. Meanwhile, in Fontrasilor, everything happens in Fontrasilor. The merchants level three attack Goscana Dascogres resource actors, and they will, in fact, invest three fake dice in this. The appearance of a troop of actors aligned with the defaults touched off a debate among Fontrasilor's perpetually bored chattering classes. Who were these people? Even was the dominant impression initially. But then word started to spread that they were aligned with the hated Shagolites. Baudville Scoffer had himself seen the generous shipments going back and forth between the two, though he'd thought nothing, nothing of it until the truth started to come out. There was a difference between debauchery and the occasional recreational use of anti-creation magic, and those assholes, even notorious hives of scum and villainy, have standards. The debate then turned to what to do about it. Some said they should allow the Inquisition to take care of it. After all, wasn't this their whole job? Well, where were they then? Too busy feathering their own nest in Safina or licking Tracorian boots, evidently? In Moscoria, it had to be said, those boots had most recently belonged to the merchant's foreign competition. No, if the suddenly right-thinking people of Fontrasilor wanted something done about this, uh, they were going to have to take matters into their own hands. Having stirred up the populace, the merchants did a brisk trade in rotting produce, meat pies of dubious provenance, exotic animal dung, and anything else that could serve as a thrown indication of displeasure. The unfortunate thespians thus found themselves pelted by a citizenry determined to run them out of town. The privateers... Remember uh, the Shagolites and their depravity in Vumbra. The, the false presence in Vumbra takes on a more sinister connotation. The privateers pick fights, further egging on the populace and eye the actors' goods as right, their rightful booty and thus start plundering them. And finally, um, as the Lady uh, Brittany mentioned, the populace... Uh, the populace the laborers are not having it with these actors and throw all manner of things at them, provided by the merchants, of course. The occasional rock might cause significant injury. So, altogether, between these three, it's 13 dice on the attack roll. The, the, um, the Goskana the Skuga decides not to defend with the actors, so they only have four dice, they don't get any extra dice. Uh, and uh, that uh, that roll with 13 dice versus four, uh, the 13, the attackers have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. And of those four are sixes, which is exactly, uh, which does five points of damage in total to the actors of the Guscana de Skugre. They are thus destroyed. This riot ends up actually killing many of the actors who found them, find themselves strung up uh, in lamp posts, thrown from various bridges to drown in the salty brine of the river Kefasa, uh, beaten to death by rocks and uh, robbed until they're... Uh, naked skin and so uh, anyone who manages to survive uh, will have to slip away from Fontasilor in, in, humili in, in, in humiliation and ignominy and thus the actress troupe is no more. 
in Moscoria. The knights work with the holy shot and train in their nearby temples and protect their values. They mobilize to the calling of the Kishat. They go from level two to level, uh, level one to level two. Um, the vintners are trying to raise influence from level one to level two. Uh, they, the miracle on the plains might have shown the imperial family to be blessed by Tammuz, but the empress wanted to do what she could to improve Moscorian agriculture in the long term. This miracle, of course, is something that was played through during the roleplay session of the adventurers when Sir Artigu worked his tectonic summons to provide the salty plains with f fertility and uh, the possibility to actually grow a harvest. Uh, the Empress's vintners were a natural choice to oversee the massive irrigation project she had in mind. Seeing the powerful take an interest in their well-being was sufficiently rare to rally curious locals to aid in her campaign of public works, even if they had not previously thought of themselves as supporter of the uh, supporters of the revived Clavikian Empire. She has 76 for this, and she managed to scrape out the two successes she needs to be successful here. And so the Empress Georgiana, previously known as Princess Folda, gains herself two levels of influence in Moscoria, which means that her hold over Palamux is now quite strong indeed. I believe she was supported here by the illusionists as well. Indeed. Alright, we move on to Lossimos. Um, the courtiers here mobilized from level 4 to level 5. The Empress courtiers visited her client king in Lossimos, bolstering the legitimacy of his fledgling rule with her presence. In exchange, they returned home with many gifts and not a few new servants, having established themselves as the dominant social power in the area. So they go from level 4 to level 5. Moving on to Zidisbar. The Lassimosi knights here try to raise influence to level 2 and they will be supported by Geryon Groteski's Mentalist Level 3. Uh, they've had their differences. Those blockheaded Zibisbari always acted like they were so superior just because people wanted to buy their stone. But the Lassimosi were now determined to put such things aside and fight for all of Palamux, or, or rather the revived Clavikian Empire. For the Empress's rationale for sending them to Transmira had since been made clear to them, for she wanted a world in which the death of a child was considered a tragedy and not simply the way of things. The mentalists look at the tasks of swaying the entire region and respond, are you kidding? Hard pass. When questioned what went wrong, they respond, those city's barns are so thick headed. And here it is 5d6 for the roll and unfortunately, uh, Georgiana only gets a single success, so no level 2 influence here, no changes, and simply all those fate dies to the chalice, um, they, that resulted in nothing. We go on to Paratorna. Uh, in Elaboria, the agents start taking uh, performance and enhancing potions to make themselves almost superhumanly effective, thus raising their capacity their level from level four to level five and we will have in rule um the merchants spread great praise of their beloved duchess and her good works this is an attempt to raise influence from level one to level two on the part of duchess gombina Mm, she has only 3d6 to roll for this, uh, one for the established influence, one for the merchants, and one for adjacent influence. And she rolls two successes. Um, so that worked. And that means that Linvina Gombina now has level two influence in rule. Uh, the mercenaries put out signs across the province, new recruits needed, some marsh folk joining the units are given jobs as commando divers. This is for Goskana Daskugra's recently acquired resource. 
the enforcers in rule are trying to raise influence from level zero to level one. Um, and they will have, I believe, four dice to roll, five dice to roll, uh, thanks to uh, support from native brain regions. And the family has sent some tufts to establish terms of a deal uh, with the muggers. The warehouses in the area are uh, officially under the wig maker's protection. And in fact, the muggers apparently agree with this. So in Golma Dokela now has level one influence in rule and gains herself an extra fate die for her trouble. There we go. Uh, we move on to Paraltro. This is, of course, where last turn Gubala Grumi met her demise. The organizers in Paraltro uh, will try to raise influence from zero to three, uh, betting all four fate dice possible. Um, more time to pick up the pieces left by, behind by Goba. The organizers have been working diligently to calm the people and secure holdings under the family's protection. Power vacuums can be a hotbed for criminal activity, and it's very important that such criminal activity happen only under an orderly umbrella. The Highlanders will help with the fave, five four, more fate dies. Unfortunately, not everyone pays the proper protection. And for those Paratornians, the Highlanders are more than happy to demonstrate the dangers of unregulated crime. Some stalls are smashed, some drunken brawls begin, and fires are set. Some fires naturally spread, particularly where no one has asked the Godmother for a fire brigade. Why, fire even damages the shipyards where the Emperor's prized Zeppelin Navy lies at anchor. Clear Clearly, crime without a permitting process is not to be preferred. Also, the guards help here as well. Those are Fundibera's guards with two fate dies. It's no surprise that the guards are all too happy um, to to and and that raises no eye and raise no eyebrows at overturned stalls. Indeed, indeed, they are happy to sweep up criminals. It's good when the criminal element can be reasoned with, makes things predictable, routine, and easy. So there's twelve dice here for the attempt. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six successes, which is more than enough to get uh, in Golmadokela three levels of influence in Paraltro. And she is thus dominant here. Since nobody else had any influence here to begin with, nobody else will also lose any influence. So. Still, uh, this gives Ingolma two more fate dice, and she will decide to, in fact, get herself a new resource. So she buys one for a fate die, and she calls this resource Bookies. Bookies level one. Um, we move on to Hajar. Here, the fire tongues renew, review through the locals and find no cause of concern. They train the locals in how to sniff out anti-creationists and advise of the rewards in doing so, mobilizing from level one to level two. The Inquisition is present in many places indeed. Uh, the foot soldiers level up from level 1 to level 2. The, they prepare themselves, going through drills and exercises to hone their skills for the coming year, for Empress Heneguia, for the Tracorian Empire. And so, Klenora's foot soldiers level up to level 2. And the guards here, Linvina's guards, took no action at all. Uh, in Tresilva, let's go to Tresilva the wig maker's home base but it starts with alicella's work uh, the contacts do what they do best they gossip every noble with a talkative tailor gets an earful of the latest scandals every fishmonger wraps their fate in cheap print pure propaganda truth is not entirely a concern that's never the goal behind every story a wistful sigh if someone knew what to 
do. The pump pieces and positive gossips comes only days later. Have you heard Alicella's latest bon mot? Isn't he clever? Tailored by local outlets to best appeal to activity where the listener wants to hear. Followed immediately by more scandal. A shame. If only someone clever knew what to do. It's a slow process. It takes time to rewrite history. And here Alicella thus erases his influence from level one to level two. And he has seven dice for this and rolls three successes and that is more than enough to succeed with that so Rowendo Alicella's influence goes up one step and there we go and then the bankers in Trisilva raise their influence from level 2 to level 3 they bet everything they can uh, with the hold solidified in Paralto it's time for Ingolma's home base uh, to reflect their true authority. All their money flows through the wig makers, with a final large loan approval passing through Ingolma herself. Word is that the Empire is in need of large sums of cash to fuel an army. Maybe it's time to talk to the Godmother. Um, she has nine dice for this, and no one can do anything there to block it, as, uh, promo as uh, uh, Rovendo Alicella has already used his resource. She rolled 96, and she has three successes, which is only just what she needed. Uh, she is thus successful in raising her influence from level two to level three, like so. And that also means that Rovendo actually loses the influence he just acquired here. It is gone now that Ingolma becomes dominant in Trisilla. Uh, she will use her recent success here to acquire a new uh, resource called Assassins Level 1. That is what she did for this turn. In Newmark, we have more actions. Alicella's agents have so far practiced a relatively soft infiltration. Uh, long enough to map out uh, power structures, the movers and shakers of both high and low society. When they get orders to go hard, it's a mess of poisonings, blackmails, abductions, and even a few cutthroat solutions. They don't topple the structures, not without something to fill the void, but they can make examples out of those who had most critical of imperial rule. Talk can be dangerous. They mobilize. And they go thus from level 4 to level 5. Uh, the water mages in Newmark go for... They mobilize from level 1 to level 2, I'm sorry. They hone their craft, helping to winterize the dams and levees to ensure that the irrigation systems for the spring planting will be ready. And thus they go from level 1 to level 2. Uh, in Malusa... There are some merchants who are also mobilizing from level 2 to level 3. Um, the merchants, under the supervision of Duchess Clenora on behalf of the Empress, work diligently to account for all assets of the disgraced Duke Ialsop de Camesti. His considerable fortunes will be used to settle his debts, including the very heavy one to the Empire. Thankfully, there is just the project to uh, put his ill-gotten gains towards. So, merchants go from level 2 to level 3. Uh, in Brallorge, there are some trade ship captains who are also mobilizing from 3 to 4. Brallorge, the goods from Mascoria and Zidisbar are brought into port and more sailors and more ships and captains wish to join the company. Wars mean greater chances to help alleviate scarcity and overburdened purses and ensure the economy stays strong. So the trade ship captains go from level 3 to level 4. We go on to... Britalva. Where the mummers mobilize. Uh, raucous laughter fills the streets as the mummers pantomime and mock the nobility. Caricatures of Tracorian power are paraded in the alleys and squares, as are destitute models of a baker, a farmer, each figure begging the question, how can but a handful of people have so much wealth and power compared to the many? Find freedom in the laughter, good folk. Tis all the liberty your masters will allow. So the mummers are now level five. 
And the ladies in waiting were also mobilized from level 3 to level 4. Um, the winter comes, and that means arranging winter festivals to bring joy in these longer, darker nights. Wintry activities and hot food and drink always bring joy to the hard workers of Bertalva. The ladies in waiting are now level 4. Uh, here there is also mobilization. The foresters head into new territory, continuing to spread their radical ideas and of creating a more equal footing between nobles and their workers. They should be free to work in peace without disruption. They're now foresters level four. And finally we go to Safina, home of the Inquisition at this point. Um, the fishermen are once again going to try and make their mark in Safina, raising their influence from level 2 to level 3. They gather their boats and tell stories of other lands not ruled by the Inquisition. But once more, the local procurators and powers that be are not impressed. The Safinans are not an easy people to move. Uh, um, the Inquisition rolled six dice and only get a single success. All those fate dice to the chalice. And for the rest of the island, it is in fact mobilization um, on uh, in the Frimbleen Plains. The farmers continue to tend their fields, knowing that the threats elsewhere in the realm doesn't impact them here. And keeping to their simple lives, they mobilize from level 4 to level 5. Everything nice and quiet on this island. And the witch hunters work with Baru to classify new targets to the Inquisition. Anti-creationists must be snuffed out, they chant. Baru replies, in due time. Mobilizing from level 4 to level 5. Some powerful witch hunters down here now. And that ends the turn of Game of Shadows for the fourth quarter of year 9. The entire year is now completed. And who knows what year 10 might bring. 10 years after the inauguration of the Chronolab, who knows what might happen next. Thank you for watching and listening.